It is starting to get quite chilly here in Maryland. We actually have just had our first snow over the weekend, so hence the hat and me uh, dressing up a little bit warmer while I'm inside the Viking here. But before we go on to our next segment, I thought right now might be a really good time to do uh, an overview of the layout of our Max Cruise Sailing Catamaran. Now that I look back on it, I don't think that we've done um, kind of like a full explanation of the layouts since we were deciding between this and the Shonen last fall. So for those of you that have been kind of just jumping into the series, you may not know how everything is going to lay out for the interior. And especially now that we have the decks on and the cabin sides on, we're going to spend the winter focusing our attention kind of within the holes. And once you get into those spaces, it can be easy to kind of get like discombobulated if we just mention what room we're in and you kind of don't know how it fits within the boat. So we're going to take this time to go back over the layout of the Max Cruise so you can get a much better idea of when we're talking about an area, kind of like how it fits into the boat. All right, so to get ourselves started, here is a uh, forward view of the starboard bow looking at the Max Cruise. And just like what we're doing with our boat, you can see it does have the raised helm here on the starboard side. The hole number four, which actually has just launched, is doing the dual helms in the aft. And because we're going to be showing some photos of that so you can get a better idea of what it looks like in real life, that is one difference between the two boats. So ours is going to be the raised helm, as you see in the render here. Any real images you see of hole number four, that is dual aft helms. And another question that has been popping up from our last video is, since we got the cabin sides on, you'll notice that the interior of those areas has a gel-coated surface, but the exterior is just the green exposed foam. And that is because eventually it will have these either acrylic or glass windows spanning the outside. And so those are going to attach to that fiberglass surface, which is why there's no gel coat there. It's never going to be seen anyway. And now we have a rendered view kind of looking from the starboard aft section where you can get a better idea of that raised helm. And with the cabin top, we do have this cut out here um, with the ability to lead all of our lines and winches here. The seat is going to be raised from the cockpit. And then taking a further look into the cockpit, this render also does have the raised helm here. Another change from what we're doing on our build versus the production version is we opted out of having this island here. Um, because all of these doors slide open for that magnificent view and with the island you can see this lifts up and these doors slide back which is also that space between the cockpit seats and bulkhead six that a few of you have asked about. Um, we wanted just like the whole opening space here, so we have opted out of this. But for anybody getting this boat, you do have that option to have it there. And to go into that a little further with real photos of a hole number four, this was taken back in the summer, so you can see how they're fitting that island in here and how this will lift up to the overhead of the cabin top while the door is here slide open and the access to this island is actually from the interior which you can see gives you extra space if you wanted i think a little fridge there some storage again since we're not putting that in ours we haven't put too much thought into what it could be used for but for anybody who is interested in that that's how you would access it from the inside but back to our boat and how it is going to be laid out this was a great piece for us to have when we were making the decision on which boat we wanted to go with to be able to build ourselves. The fact that this render lays everything out and it also gives the measurements so we can get not even just an idea of the space, but if we had wanted to, we could have built a model kind of showing because, and again, this is being done in Vietnam, so all of the measurements are in metric. These are millimeters here but it shows you how big, you know, the table is and how long the galley is on one side versus the other. The size of the beds, space of the holes, showers, and things like that. 
but let's take away the measurements a second and then just give you kind of a better view of what our three cabin layout looks like. So rotating that view about 180 degrees now, what you can see is, um, again, this is the cockpit with the island, and this one is showing the two full cockpit seats, which means the aft helms are here and here, but ours will be different because we'll have our helm coming up over here. But once you step inside from the cockpit into the main salon and galley area, if you go to the starboard side, you have kind of your settee over here, the tables, which usually can get, you know, pushed down, have an extra cushion on top of them. It can be bedding if you need to be. Then going down, we have the owner's hall here with a 60 inch wide queen size berth. And then there's a hallway with extra storage leading into the vanity. So when we talk about bulkheads, this spanning across here is bulkhead five. So in the owner's hall, once you go forward of bulkhead five, we have the vanity and then bulkhead four, which spans across here. There's the toilet and the shower and that will come up in future videos, but <laughs> so we have those spaces and then forward of that is accessible from the deck. This is um, like sail locker storage and then more storage here leading to a watertight bulkhead here. And in case you're wondering, the Hall of Fame is this little spot right here, which is just about full. And then we're going to have to jump over to Portside Hole here and start getting names on there. And then looking at a render of the owner's hole from kind of more of a side view, you can see how the steps lead down. This is the media area. And then there is kind of a storage locker here leading towards the berth. This is bulkhead six here, the entrance to our bed. And then if you were to start walking forward, we have hanging locker storage space here and then leading up to bulkhead five right here, there will be a dagger board on our boat. So it's gonna kind of be a floor to ceiling space here. And then if we go forward a bulkhead five, again, there is the vanity. So we can have sinks on the inboard side along with storage. And then on the outboard side, there is also more shelving and cabinet space uh, leading up to the toilet and shower area. All right, so walking from the owner's hole back up into the main salon area, there is a navigation station right here with just kind of an extra counter in this space. And then over here is a kind of like media center. You can put a television up there. There will be some storage in here. And then if you go to the port side, once you have entered from the cockpit, we have the whole galley here, and what's really cool about this design, and one of the things that Matt and I love, is the galley space. So the counter that runs back here and kind of shares the space with the set to you there, the same length on this side, is that is seven feet long. So huge space. And not only do we have that, which probably the refrigerators will go under here. I'll show you some different angles in a second but there's also a five foot galley counter over here. So tons and tons of galley room. In the main salon, you can get a better idea of that galley space with the two counters. This is the seven foot long one. And in this render, they have the refrigeration. For this forward, this is where bulkhead five runs transverse across the boat. And then on the further outboard side on the five foot counter, um, they have the electric cooktop stove. And once these things actually start getting built, this is the stuff that Matt and I are running up against right now is kind of where do we want to put the stove? Where do we want to put the sink? Because once the backbones of all of this are in, you can kind of change those minor details. And so these are the questions we ask ourselves every day. But within the main salon area, again, you can see the island here that is in hole number four and in the renders that we will not have. But the back of this is the settee running in an L shape, the nav desk, 
and then the media station here. And then if we go down to the guest hall, there's going to be two different sets of stairs that go down. So if we come in as soon as you've entered from the cockpit and look aft, there is another kind of like mirrored situation of our berth, queen size here, uh, a little bit of storage. And then there are two bulkheads, which we haven't permanently placed in yet, but they will uh, give the entrances to the guest head which we do have a mold of that area, which comes kind of like with the raised platform for the toilet and the area for the sink. And then it's just kind of a wet shower too. So within this area, there will be a um, nozzle that you can bring up and shower yourself. So to get to the forward bunk, um, there is another set of steps leading down from the forward edge of the galley by bulkhead five here come in and then there's going to be some storage in these areas and then a smaller bed up here. I can't remember if it's double or full for some reason that always trips me up. So taking a look at the side view of the guest berth, you can see the first set of steps that come down leading into the aft berth here. Uh, again, this is bulkhead six, which is what separates the cockpit from the salon. And then there is, once you come down the steps, storage shelving units here and the bed. The bulkheads that lead into the head where the toilet sits in this corner. And again, since this is pre-molded, we will be keeping that same setup with the toilet here and the sink here. Another door that leads forward to the other guest bunk with a set of steps leading down. This is bulkhead five. So this is the forward part of the salon area. So we've got a little bit of storage over here. And again, with the renders, we may not lay ours out exactly the same way, but just to kind of give an idea of the space and the potential that's there. And now for the fun part is looking at some of the more finished photos, real life of hole number four. This is a set that we got back in August and we are excitedly waiting for new photos of the interior. Understandably, they don't want to release them until they have the interior completely fitted out because it is so, so close to being finished. You know, it just needs to get cushions in and other items, and then we can actually see what the first full production version looks like. But from back in the summer, this is what a more finished version of this area is. So we have seen the cockpit leading into the salon area here. Then if you were to come in and look port, this is the first section of the galley, that five foot area. And you can tell again that they have switched it from the render. So the sink is over here. And then you can see the two sets of steps that lead down to both of the guest berths with the head being in the space back here. Then looking the other direction towards starboard, you can kind of start to see this is the um, transverse part of the settee the table, the media station, and the navigation desk here. And this is the set of steps leading down into the owner's hole. So saying that we are down in the owner's hole in the aft queen berth looking forward, you can see the steps here. And then this is bulkhead five leading into the head and the vanity. On the production version, there is storage going all the way up to the overhead. That's still a debate for Matt and I of how we want to handle it, but you'll see that coming up in future episodes as we start to put some of our foam pieces into place. Then if you were down in the guest hole and you were in the guest bath looking aft towards the queen size bed, this is the set of steps leading down. You can tell under the bed they have cut areas for drawers here, access to engines, but this is the berth here and turning your view 180 degrees forward if you're still standing in the guest bath. This is the second set of steps that come down from the forward part of the galley. Bulkhead five here, looking forward into the guest berth. Again, you can tell they've got drawers set up for storage under the bed. Then there is the guest head. This is if you're standing in the aft berth looking forward. So again, we have this whole molded section kind of sitting in there right now. Of course, we don't have any of the hardware, not a toilet yet or a sink, but you can kind of see how the area does get closed in. And then this is your shower as well. 
And one of my favorite shots is an exterior view looking at the starboard hull. Absolutely beautiful lines. Uh, she doesn't have stanchions or anything in here yet, but looking just amazing. Um, in real life, they've just launched her again, so we have a few photos that we'll hopefully be sharing with you soon, but our excitement is growing every day. Definitely keeping us motivated to keep working through the winter and this cold weather to get ourselves out. Uh, not next summer, not this next coming summer, hopefully the summer afterward, but that is the layout of our boat. Please let us know if you have any questions, and I think I will be going into more detail again soon once we can get more photos of the um, production version. So hopefully this helps you through the winter as we begin our own work inside the hulls. All right, so now that you have a better idea of the layout of our boat, we are going to take a quick little trip into the future and show you how we are working through the winter and in the snow. <laughs> and this is something that we wanted to cover as soon as we put on the cabin tops because we knew it was a question that was going to come up a lot, but life kind of got in the way. We got distracted with work on the boat and didn't get around to filming this until right now. So some of the things that you're going to see in the boat are big, big jumps ahead. So don't worry, we will be going back to cover those, but we just kind of want to show you the space, how we are working through the cold weather, um, so let's take a look inside the tent and Matt will explain how we can continue to work when we're covered in snow. So Jess may have mentioned it before in the video that we are kind of jumping ahead a little bit to projects that we've been completing in the past couple of weeks. Um, right now I'm in the master head. This is my shower area, big, big old shower space. And we have been doing some glass work in here. Um, one of the things you notice is the phenomenal lighting that we have right now. Uh, that was pretty much the first project. The first thing we really needed to do when we um, got the decks on is to be able to light this area so we can actually work properly. Um, these are just simple LED lights, little light bars. Um, I think for a six pack of these, I paid something like 40 bucks, 50 bucks maybe at the most for them and they are a warm light. They're like 3000 Kelvin. Um, so it's a good light for what we need to do for all the work. And you can see, I mean, they do an amazing job getting into all the little places that we need to work. It's real simple wiring then, just uh, they kind of just uh, have connection cords that you can put in between each strand of these, each was a four foot section basically of them. And then there's one end with a switch on it. Well, it actually comes with multiple switches. So we have a uh, string ran down the port side, string ran down the uh, starboard side, and all we gotta do is just plug in the extension cord and we've got lights. So simple, easy, um, very inexpensive. We don't have to worry about them at all. They're just plastic so we can hit them. We knock them down all the time as we're moving stuff around and apparently don't need to dust them ever. <sighs> Well, it's taken quite a bit of thought now trying to figure out how we're going to work all winter long. Um, first step was making sure that we had resin readily available that was at the proper temperature. Um, part of that's for storage. It doesn't like to be cold weather um, uh, all the time stored in that. Really to, to maximize the life of it, you need to be in around that 70 degree temperature range. Um, but we have a, a storage area where we hold the majority of our stuff, but we needed stuff while we're in the tent to be able to get quick access to it. So we have a gallon of uh, fine elastor, we have a gallon of polyiso, um, and then two gallons of the total boat uh, uh, polyester putty that we use all of the time. So those things are all in this cooler. Um, what we really, the objective was, is to, again, have heated stuff that's readily available, but also to make sure that we're not gonna burn down the boat. Um, everything that we're talking about is pretty flammable. And uh, the vapors, when they kind of uh, build up, there is a flash point that they end up, they would basically combust then at that point. So what we wanted to do is make sure that there's no heating element in this area that could cause a spark, um, could uh, uh, ignite that. The system that I put in here is a waterproof heating pad 
Um, what it's used for is in greenhouses to heat a tray of plants, basically, to whatever temperature you want to set it at. So it's a waterproof thing, but the most important part was they actually lead the thermostat. This thermostat's external here. So the wiring connections you can see are all made out here where it's air going around circulating, so there's no issue of that. And it's not a mechanical thermostat. Mechanical thermostats can have an arc in them, um, basically create like a spark, and that can cause a problem too. So this is just pushed away, no real worries about that at all. It's all digital, that type of thing. We set it at basically 70 degrees. There is, on the inside here, there is a little temperature sensor here that just goes onto the side and then the mats down at the bottom, and then everything sits right directly on top of it. Just a great way, really inexpensive. I think the thermostat and the heating pad is like $30. The igloo cooler maybe was 30 bucks at that point too. So, and then the other thing too is, it is incredibly efficient. This system, it's duty cycle, it runs about 50% of the time on and off in the temperature that we're seeing right now. And it's a 40 watt pad. So realistically, we're, we're not using much power at all to keep these things available um, in, in the best possible condition we had and can and make sure that everything cures on time when we expect it to. Now that we spoke of how we keep the resin warm, um, now it's basically how do we glass in these areas. Right now we're in front of bulkhead uh, five. Basically this is our bathroom area, our forward head area. And what we do is we just, again, just put down that curtain of, of bubble wrap has been sufficient so far. We will probably go with something a little bit heavier duty, or duty when we really need to, but as it stands right now, it's been perfectly adequate. What we do is we heat the surface first with an infrared heater. This does a really good job. It doesn't necessarily heat the whole surrounding area as much as whatever this is focused in on. And so the idea is to get the substrate, get what we're trying to glass over to a good warm temperature. Typically I'm searching for like the lower 80s. Um, what that allows me to do then is I can take the heat off of it and it retains enough heat that by the time I'm done glassing and the ambient temperature inside the area, um, it's gonna be around that 65, 70 degree mark. So it seems to work out perfect for us. Heat it up to about 80 degrees, each area that we're glassing with an infrared heater, either this guy with a tripod, or we have another one that's just kind of bench mounted, a floor mounted model. And we heat those areas, and then what we do is we move in an oil filled uh, uh, radiator type of thing, and set that in here. And that's while we're glassing, while we're working, it does keep that temperature up inside here. Realistically, we're still looking at about an hour to two hour cure time um, in 70 degree temperature before I know it's good. So the idea is at, towards the end of the day, we'll do our glassing, and then we leave that oil-filled uh, heater in here, keeping that, the temperature warm. We'll go have dinner, and then before we go to bed, come back out here, turn it off for the night, and at that point, everything is absolutely rock solid. We don't worry about it. I did not even realize until I get in here that my hat kind of matches the background. Blend right in, kind of green screen. <laughs> but this is a very exciting month. Um, if you can't tell, I am in the Hall of Fame right now, which is between bulkheads two and three in the boat. And this is where we list all of our patrons' names. Um, exciting news this week, I have just finish the starboard side. There's no more names going on here because we need the corners available for glassing and steps and other things. So next month you're going to see me coming fresh from our port hull. But exciting news too about this month is there are so many names I get to put with faces because this is the group, part of the group that had just signed up around the Annapolis Boat Show back in October. So a lot of you came out to see us at the YouTube Sailing Channels booth came to our Patreon meetups. So as I'm writing these names on here, 
few of you look very familiar and it's nice to see your name up here on the board. And I do want to give a shout out to our Silver Level member, Jody Bulmer. So now that we have filled up the starboard hull with names, I think it's gonna be time pretty soon to do like an epoxy coat or something to protect these. If you look at the very first wall, which is all of our oldest patrons, you can tell that it's been getting a little bit of dust gathering on there. Uh, names are starting to fade in, so we definitely need to clear that up and protect that soon. But if you are interested in joining our Patreon family, which includes benefits like early releases of videos, ad-free, um, getting real-time progress updates to see exactly what we're up to in the tent right now, or if we want to have this entire space be a countertop and storage, we're thinking about moving the toilet right in here as soon as you walk into the shower area. But of course, before we made that decision, we had glassed this little bulkhead in, which would now have to come back out. And, and of course, getting your name up here in the Hall of Fame. Just make sure to follow the link above here and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing your name up here too. And I must have a cockpit view, right? I mean, I have to. Where would you be, cockpit view? Where'd you go? Three cabin layout. Okay. Just a crotch shot? <laughs> No, I, I didn't get your crotch. I'm showing this. I mean, I can focus on your crotch. What, what the? Like, I was showing temperature because I got uh, it like when we started. Yeah,